guys, welcome to News in Brief on Vantage TV, where you get the quick updates on the stories that made the rounds within the week. My name is Anita Makon, let's get started. On the national news, President Wari admonishes leaders of political parties. On Tuesday in Abuja, Nigeria's President Muhammadu Buhari hosted the leadership of political parties and members of the business community to an iftar dinner. Given a charge for oneness in the fight against insecurity, even as the electionary season draws near, he described insecurity as an enemy of all. According to the official statements from the presidential aide, he urged all political parties in the country to keep elections and election-related differences aside and join his government's drive to defeat insecurity in the country. Vice President Yemi Oshibajo kicks off critical consultations ahead of 2023. Vice President Yemi Oshibajo on Tuesday met with critical stakeholders in Ogun State as part of his ongoing consultations towards the realization of his 2023 presidential ambitions. Accompanied by the Ogun State Governor Dapo Abiodun, the Vice President began at his hometown in Remo, where he met with the traditional heads, party officials and delegate members. The Governor as well as the ruler of Remo land, the Akaribo, commended Osibajo's purposeful leadership and expressed support towards his aspiration with blessings. In a separate visit to the palace of the ruler of Ondo State, the Deji of Akure, the VP also gained the support of the monarch. And the LEA 6 drug integrity test for politicians ahead of primaries. The chairman and chief executive of National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, retired Brigadier General Buba Mawa, has written a letter to the chairman of the All Progressive Congress APC, Senator Abdullahi Adamu, requesting that the NDLEA be given access to conduct drugs integrity tests for politicians seeking political offices in the country. He explained that the drug test is necessary to ensure that politicians vested with important national offices have a proper stance as regards illicit drug use and purchase. He concluded that the same will be carried out for the PDP and other parties ahead of their party primaries. AFDB votes $1.5 billion to prevent looming food crisis in Africa. President of the African Development Bank, Dr. Akin Wumi Adeshina, said the bank has decided to shore up Africa's food security with a $1.5 billion Africa emergency food plan in the wake of the Russia-Ukraine conflict, which has been projected to trigger a global food crisis. Additional stated this on Tuesday during a meeting with President Muhammadu Buhari in Abuja, with the president remarking that his administration in foresight had shut the country's large borders for about two years to boost the productivity rate of Nigerian farmers and homegrown food items. On to international news, Russia halts gas supplies to Poland and Bulgaria for failing to pay in Russian currency. Russian energy firm Gazprom said on Wednesday that it had halted gas supplies to Bulgaria and Poland for failing to pay for gas in the Russian currency rubles. Even as both countries accuse Gazprom of breaching long-standing supply contracts, Russian President Vladimir Putin demanded that other European countries receiving gas supply must pay for gas in rubles or be cut off as well. This is now the Kremlin's toughest retaliation yet to international sanctions over the war in Ukraine and the European Union has since decried this demand as complete blackmail. Elon Musk buys Twitter in $44 billion deal. Elon Musk, the world's richest man, has finally bought up Twitter in a $44 billion takeover. Twitter and Musk negotiated into the early hours of Tuesday over his bid less than two weeks after the billionaires first revealed a massive stake. Given reason for selling Twitter, founder Jack Dorsey said Elon Musk is the only solution to achieving the purpose of Twitter being run for the public good, adding that he trusts Elon's goal of creating a platform that is maximally trusted and broadly inclusive. The Tesla chief, now new Twitter boss, said last week that he had lined up for the $6.5 billion initially to buy Twitter, putting added pressure on the company's board to negotiate a deal. Elon Musk, who says he plans to unlock the full potential of the social media giant, has now been touted as the world's most powerful man with an estimated fortune of $260 billion. Wow! Alright guys, that's it on the national and the international news on Vantage TV's News in Brief. Coming up shortly, entertainment news. Stay tuned. Hi guys, I'm 
Alifa and you're welcome to Entertainment on the News in Brief where I bring you the juiciest stories that made the rounds this week. Let's get right into it. Drama, Banky W featuring Whiskey. Loads of buzz have followed a recent interview granted by Bankole Wellington aka Banky W where several revelations came to the fore after mentioning that superstar Whiskey during his time with EME Records breached their contract by producing only two albums out of five before leaving the label co-managed by Banky, there was more. Banky W went on to express his disappointment towards Whiskey for not attending his wedding back in 2017 with an excuse of his absence to cushion the effect. In reaction to the interview, Whiskey responded on Twitter with a simple LOL. Hmm, inside joke maybe. Kemi Adetiba is married. Yes, hashtag undeniably yours 2022, aka the wedding party three, went down last Saturday as Kemi Adetiba signed the dotted lines with her Ghanaian Nigerian beau, Oscar Herman Aka. The King of Voice producer made it officially official as she tied the knot with the talented music producer in a lavish yet low key Afrocentric ceremony with her closest friends and family in attendance. Aside the brilliantly clad couple and Kemi's humongous gile, the highlight of the widely watched wedding was Auntie Shola Shobowale in formation as doting mama of the bride and the myriad of celebrities who arrived to turn heads and stun the paparazzi even as Kemi got the Oscars. Still on hashtag undeniably yours 2022, fans come for Adesua for her outfit to Kemi Adetiba's wedding. The wedding things, Banky W and Adesua showed up to the wedding playing Machi Machi in my Atafo's outfit with eyes for one another alone. While Adesua opted to serve some less is more vibes in sleek cornrows next to natural makeup and a shimmery kimono, the people of social media arrived gallantly on her TL with majority stating that her appearance was both belittling for her and unbefitting for a wedding, with some comments referring to the dress as a mere placeholder before the actual wedding guest's dress. Siri, please play me a classic reaction from Bonner's epic grandma. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the funniest thing we saw this week. And it's a wrap guys. Sit back, relax as sports comes right up. Hello sports lovers, welcome to Sports on the News and Brief. I am Emilio Menesopsis and these are the top stories. In tennis, Wimbledon chairman Ian Hirot insists its ban of Russian and Belarusian players is because it is not prepared to be used to benefit the propaganda machine of the Russian regime. Despite criticism from tennis governing bodies and many players, the tournament which will run from 27 June to 10 July remains unwavering in its decision. World number one Novak Djokovic can defend his Wimbledon title after organizers said players who are not vaccinated against COVID-19 will be allowed to compete. The Serbian back in January was not allowed to play at the Australian Open due to his unvaccinated status. Of the All England Lawn Tennis Club Chief Executive Sally Bolton at a news conference further buttressed that the requirement set out by the government to enter the UK does not include mandatory vaccination. And now, the NBA. Stephen Curry and Giannis Atetokounmpo led their respective teams to playoff wins on Wednesday. As Curry scored 30 points in his first start of the playoffs, the Warriors won 102-98 against the Denver Nuggets, securing a 4-1 victory and officially earning their place in the Western Conference semifinals. Atetokounmpo scored 33 points as the Milwaukee Bucks beat the Chicago Bulls and in all, the Bucks earned a 116-100 win over the visiting Bulls to reach the Eastern Conference semifinals, where they will take on the Boston Celtics. And now boxing. WBC heavyweight champion Tyson Fury has confirmed that he is done with boxing. The 33-year-old British fighter stated after the six-round knockout of Dillian White that he was deciding to leave boxing behind to spend more time with his family. Sporting an outstanding record in the ring, Fury is unbeaten in 33 bouts, winning 32 and drawing one. And in football, Inter Milan are poised to reel the chance to top the Serie A as goalkeeper Ionut Redus Haula gifted Bologna victory and put City rivals AC Milan in control of the title race with two points clear at the top and four games to go. In the Champions League, Manchester City started their quest for a Champions League title on a high note by beating Madrid 4-3 in the first leg of the semi-final at the Etihad. Liverpool beat a resilient Villarreal side 2-0 to secure a great advantage 
heading to the second leg of the UEFA Champions League semi-final. Both English teams are bound for Spain for the second leg against their Spanish rivals with the possibility of an all-English or all-Spanish final still open. And that's sports or the news in brief. Follow Vantage TV for all the news, sports and entertainment. I am Emilio Menesov Until I return next week, remember to like, share and subscribe.